Hi. So today we're going to be taking a look at, well, you've seen the thumbnail and, to be honest, all the other people covering it on YouTube. It's supposedly a handheld 386 PC with a built-in keyboard and monitor and everything like that. And now, I wasn't actually all that interested in covering this initially because my channel isn't really a review channel, it's more of a sort of experimentation channel. If you're just looking for a review of the unit and going over its features and stuff, I'll give you a link to some other review channels below. But I did notice a few interesting features about it on the AliExpress advert that might be interesting to experiment with, and when my mate bought one of these and offered to have it shipped to me to experiment with first, I thought, well, it might be interesting to see what we can do with this. So if you're watching the video right now, that means that I've found something interesting to do with it. <laughs> if it just ends up being a review, I probably won't bother uploading it. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, who have kindly manufactured lots of things for me for over two years now. They're currently celebrating their ninth birthday, so they have some great discounts and promotions on. There's loads of free coupons available covering many different price points, but quantities are limited, so better get ordering. They're offering up to 50% off their 3D printing and CNC machining services, and I can testify that their quality is top notch. These 3D resin prints I ordered are the best I've ever seen, and were outstandingly cheap, even before this promotion. There's also a lucky prize draw with a bunch of great prizes, from robotic cats to raspberry pies, and even this adorable sleeping cabbage dog, I want it so bad. They're now offering sponsorships for non-profit projects through the PCV Way Electronics Development Fund, so if you have a cool idea that requires funding then get in touch with them. Without further ado then, I suppose let's get inside. I'm going to use this uh, <laughs> multi-tool opener thing that my father-in-law gave me for Christmas, knowing that I'd have to fly home with it in my wallet. <laughs> it was an interesting conversation with the security, I'll tell you that much. Oh, seems to work fine. All right, what do we have? And the unit itself. <laughs> Oh wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's quite something. The, the keys feel pretty squishy. I'm not sure you'd want to type on that for very long. I believe the, these come pre-installed with Windows 95 OSR2 or OSR2.5 or something. Um, but uh, I think it's fairly ambitious to try and run Windows 95 on a 386, but we'll see how that goes later. Now, up the side we have, I think this is a compact flash slot. USB port. Can't be a native USB port, so I wonder if that's for charging? Oh no, no that isn't what it's for because the charging case plugs into this, so it's like a barrel jack. Who knows, we'll find out later I suppose. Uh, on this side we have, I think this is for PS2 keyboard and mouse, it comes with a little adapter that plugs into there. Yeah, here we go, it's a little adapter that plugs into that that gives us PS2 keyboard and mouse and what looks like external VGA, so that's cool. But the thing I'm most interested in looking at is this long port here. Now I believe this is ISA, just in a different form factor. It looks a bit like PC-104, but it's 2mm pitch header instead of being 2.54, so we might have a bit of difficulty converting that to normal ISA, but we, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Well, um, I suppose without further ado, let's uh, try powering up and see what happens. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Screen's awfully dark and small, but yeah. Okay, we have uh, AMI BIOS, that's a good thing, because I know there are some other similar clone PCs on AliExpress that use a pirated version of Sergei Kisilev's 8088 BIOS, so it's good that they're using AMI BIOS, although I don't know if they have the rights to use this either, but you know, at least they're not ripping off an open source project. I'm in MS-DOS 7.1, look at that. Oh, interestingly, it's got a CH375 USB disk driver? Ah, okay, so the CH375 USB disk is the same chip as you get on on those ISA to USB converters that let you mount a USB disk as like a very slow floppy drive, basically. I guess that maybe explains what the USB port on the side is for. Interesting. Going by other reviews on YouTube, I think there should be some games on here as well. So uh, I suppose let's, let's do what most people do next is uh, game. Good lord, I do not want to have to type on this for very long. Uh, other people on YouTube have already gone through all these games, but uh, let's just give Doom a quick run, because I assume that it's not going to play very well. Doom 1.2. I'm sure that's quite an old version. Just about hear the audio. Okay, forward, backward doesn't work. Oh, it's WSAD, look at that. Die, 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 die. So we're getting what looks like single digit frames per second. <laughs> Of course, we could make the screen size even smaller, uh, but good luck playing it like that. Okay, yeah, we're actually getting a decent frame right now, not that I can actually see what's going on. All right, yeah, this is this is no fun at all. <laughs> I think before we get too distracted, let's uh, see what's inside the thing. Okay, here we have it. Um, Double-sided board, so there's, there's components on both sides. Over here we have a dm and pm M6117D. Now, I've actually got a few industrial motherboards that have this processor. What it is, is it's basically a 386 system-on-chip, as well as having the 386 processor on board it includes all of the kind of chips 
tech components that you'd normally need to run a 386. So sort of, you know, memory decoding and, you know, PS2 floppy. I don't know if it supports floppy, but that kind of thing as well. We have four RAM chips. I think this thing has eight megabytes, so presumably each one's two megabytes. It also has two BIOS chips, one for the regular system BIOS and one for presumably the video BIOS. We've also got a Chips F65535. Uh, I think that's the video chip, so it'll be some kind of ISA VGA chipset. I don't know if it's any good. This is the OPL3 chip, so that, that's the, basically the sound card. It acts like an ad lib. Uh, I wonder what this is. Sharp Japan LH6A4260K. The uh, fact that it sort of seems to be connected to the video chip, and the fact that it's got a dash 60 at the end, which normally indicates RAM speed. I'm guessing this is maybe video RAM, uh, but I can't find a data sheet for it just now. I'm sure I'll eventually find one if I look hard enough. On the other side, okay, here's the CH357, so that's near the USB port, so I guess that confirms that they're using this as like a floppy emulator, which is pretty cool. That, that would be quite useful if it, if, if it works. <laughs> the screen assembly. Now I'm guessing this is, yeah, so this RTD2660 chip is a Realtek LCD driver that supports HDMI, VGA, etc. Takes the VGA signal from the VGA chip and turns that into a signal the LCD understands. So yeah, yeah, pretty simple design overall, um, but uh, very, very interesting use of what looked like reclaimed chips. And uh, I, as someone who's spent a lot of time making stupid little PCs, I definitely approve of this product. <laughs> All right, here it is back together. I've loaded the compact flash card with a few more games to see how it copes with different screen modes and so on. Let's try a CGA game for a start. It's way bluer on camera than it is in real life. Don't know what that's all about. Never really sure what you're meant to be doing in Alley Cat. Original untitled goose game in a lot of ways. Well, whatever. The point is, CGA graphics seem to work pretty well. Let's try an EGA game. Yeah, it looks fine. Almost playable, actually, with these uh, key setups. Almost. And I suppose if you were to hold it like this, a bit like a Nintendo Game Boy Advance, then yeah this is actually almost playable <laughs> the point is everything looks fine colors seem fine even though you can't really tell on this camera but um whatever upscaling the lcd controller is doing seems to be perfectly acceptable let's try perhaps a slightly more advanced vga game okay yeah this is not too bad at all yeah this is this is extremely playable or at least it would be with a proper keyboard <laughs> yeah nothing wrong with this at all getting some slowdown nothing too bad. Right, the last thing I want to try is a program called Fast Doom. It was originally intended to be optimized for slower processors, but it's grown in scope to uh, support a whole host of weird graphics modes and adapters and stuff. It's a really great project. I'll give you a link to the GitHub below. Now, it's still running pretty slow, but there are a lot of things we can do. We can turn the, the detail level down to potato, which, uh, yeah, that, that's not too bad in terms of frame rate, but, you know, we can't really see what's going on. But it's the other stuff that I'm kind of interested in, in, like, turning off the Sky rendering, visplane rendering. What that visplane thing done is turned off the rendering of the floors and ceilings. It's a bit like some of the console versions. They also didn't render the floors and ceilings. But yeah, we've got it up to a semi-acceptable frame rate now, although the graphic quality is pretty terrible. But yeah, no, it's uh, certainly an improvement. I think it's time we probably started to look at what I originally got hold of this for in the first place, and that's examining the ISA port down the side. Thankfully, the data sheet of the system on chip inside here is available, and I was able to just sort of beep out the pinout using my multimeter, and it turns out to be, thankfully, very similar to PC-104. It's just missing the very top and very bottom rows of pins, which you don't really need anyway, so that's fine. But using that information, which I've hopefully remembered to display on screen just now, I've built this slightly ridiculous cable made up of uh, two 44-pin to 40-pin IDE cables that I just dremeled in half to get down to the right size and crammed in beside each other. And into that, I've connected this PC-104 to ISA adapter that I designed ages ago for another project, but um, I found it very useful to do weird stuff like this. Yeah, in theory, I think this should give us a full ISA port on this device. Now, into the adapter, I'm going to plug this ISA test card, which is a very, very simple way of checking that all the necessary voltages, signals, and whatnot are present. And it'll also display any BIOS post codes up in here as well. Yeah, look at that. All right, we have uh, five volt power and it's outputting post test codes. Amazing. That's really, really good. Let's see if we have QBasic. We do have QBasic. All right. Um, so let's just write a quick program to write a value to the card. Out, start. 69! Hey, look at that. Very, very nice. Cool. So I think we have a working ISA slot. Amazing! 
maybe try a more interesting card in it now. I thought I'd maybe start with a sound card. Actually, most sound cards require like positive and negative 12 volts, but this sound card that uh, I designed only needs 5 volts, and it's actually already PC 104, so we won't even need that ISA adapter. All right, sound blaster is plugged in. Uh, right, so I need to initialize the sound card. All right, yeah, it's detected it. Crap cool card. <laughs> For some reason, I called it that. Well, there we go. Look at that. It's actually playing out both the ad lib inside it and the ad lib in the sound card. That's weird. Oh, we got audio too. Amazing. We're still going just as slow as before, but. <laughs> I'm sure, the pistol didn't use to fire this slowly. It's very difficult to aim at this frame rate. There we go. All right, uh, no desire to play this much more. Try Jazz Jackrabbit. It also supports sound blasters. Well, music's pretty low quality, but at least we have audio now. Doesn't seem to be running any slower either. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. So this is what I tried next. Uh, I plugged a uh, Hercules monochrome card into it and connected it up to a monochrome monitor in the hope that I could maybe get to the new Fast Doom dual screen mode working, but uh, unfortunately it does not work. So if I go mode mono, we just get a load of corrupted nonsense. Um, the reason for this, I suspect, is because the built-in graphics chip in the Hand 386 also supports Hercules emulation, so I'm guessing the two graphics cards are having a bit of a fight, so uh, unfortunately that's not gonna work. <laughs> but it was worth a shot anyway. So just for fun, I've put Windows 3.1 on it and it seems to work really well. Definitely a more appropriate GUI than Windows 95 for a machine of this age. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my sound card to work in either Windows 95 or Windows 3.1. I think maybe the WSS port is being blocked or something like that, but I can't be bothered to figure it out. Probably I could get a Sound Blaster 16 or something like that working on it, but that would require setting up a whole new power supply and so on, so I'm not going to bother with that. I've also got the mouse and keyboard plugged in and working, so that, that makes things a little bit more usable. Now that we, the PS2 ports are working, it gives me a chance to show you a preview of a project I've been working on, which is this. This is called the Hidman, and it's a USB to yes converter. I'll maybe remove that joke in the final one. Um, basically, it takes up to two USB HID devices and converts it to PS2 mouse, PS2 keyboard and also serial mouse. So you can use a modern USB keyboard and mouse on old computers, but it's becoming more and more uncommon to find modern keyboards and mice that support PS2. So um, this should be quite a useful thing, I think. So now I've got the Hidman plugged into the PS2 adapter for the Hand 386. And as one of the devices I've plugged in is this, a PS4 controller, which it will happily accept as a device and turn the button and D-pad presses into key presses. So now you can see, as I press buttons, that turns it into key presses. Left and right goes left and right. Let's try playing a game. You can navigate the whole menu from here. It's just, uh, this is enter, this is escape by default. So let's see if it works. There we go, and I'm playing Jazz Jackrabbit with a PS4 controller. This is a lot more playable than that tiny keyboard, or indeed any keyboard, to be honest. The trouble with PC games is they did often require you to use the keyboard, and although you could you could buy a like a Gravis joypad or whatever, um, doesn't work with every game. So the Hidman is completely open source, and I'll give you a link to my GitHub below. I'll make a full video about it on another day, but for now, if you fancy building one, it's all open source. Just head to my GitHub. So, what do I think of the Hand 386 overall? Well, as a curiosity, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I think it's uh, really cool that companies are reusing old reclaimed chips to do something so unique and interesting. If you're just interested in it from a sort of weird device point of view, then by all means grab one. I think you won't be disappointed. But if you're actually looking to use this as a portable gaming or even worse productivity device, then um, I think you're going to be very disappointed. Playing games on this little squishy keyboard really isn't feasible. And in any case, the 386 processor severely limits the choice of games you have. But it does raise the possibility of an improved version of this device. Maybe something with a more powerful processor, like DM&P do some very, very nice x86 compatible system on chips that are even more powerful than Pentium. Specifically the Vortex 86, which is the same chip that I put in my tiny little Wii C mini DOS gaming PC. A Vortex 86 chip with slightly more RAM, a better keyboard, possibly with like a built-in D-pad and some buttons. I think would actually be a really cool portable DOS gaming device. So I'm very interested to see if the company that made the Hand 386 end up doing anything else down the line. Yeah, I suppose we'll see what happens. So yeah, that's probably about it for this video. If you liked it, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment, etc. I'll leave some links below to some other reviews of this unit that go into a bit more depth. And if you're interested in the Hidman, I'll give you a link to my GitHub below. And I'll have a video covering it in more detail on my channel soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for watching and catch you next time.